Hello, time for a lunchtime edition of Mornings with Stanley. Lucy's over there. She was here earlier and I was about to start the video and I got a phone call. Now I'm afraid my lunch is going to be ready and my my oven is going to tell me that my lunch is ready and I have to stop mid, mid um, devotion. But anyway, here's Stanley. We're having a good day. Well, it's not really a good day. I will say, well, yeah, this is, I hate this pandemic. I know we all do. Try to do the right thing, make the right decisions. We decided on church council, not everybody responded. I think a lot of people that didn't respond probably don't want to do what we're doing. And I understand that. I don't want to do what we're doing either. I just, but we've decided to cancel in-person worship for the rest of the year and probably restart mid-January. If the numbers go down, I mean, if not everybody does what we're going to do, then the numbers might go, not go down. But the healthcare workers are just swamped. You know, that's the main thing. I mean, it's bad now. I'm 2,000 people dying a day now. I just saw today on a, on Facebook, I follow several Methodist churches in our conference. And a small church, same size as, um, about same size as St. Mark. And, um, in Arlington, St. Stephen Methodist Church, a sister of one of their church members died of COVID this weekend. That's like, oh, it's just so real. You know, <clears throat> it seems unreal until it's real. And, and I was just what <clears throat> they were interviewing an actor, a guy on the West Wing that had had it, and, uh, who was in the hospital and, just, and his wife who had a mild case and said she just ne had never had that kind of trouble breathing before and he had it and he was um, he's just you know he said his body is just weak he can hardly do anything it's like if, if you get it bad it is really really bad so anyway it's a difficult decision I don't like it I'm ready for it to be over and I feel like the sooner the, the better we behave now you know, the, vir the vaccines are coming, that maybe we can, maybe by Easter or late spring, all this will be just a memory. And maybe we'll never have to do this again, at least in our lifetime. Anyway, let me get this feller out of the room so I can maybe get this devotion done before my watch tells me that my oven has finished cooking my lunch. I have a, this oven that's got an app on it. And it's, it'll tell me when it's my food is ready. I could I just look while it's on my phone. It tells me um, how much time is left. Our re reading today is Galatians chapter 2, verse 16. Yet we know that a person is justified not by the works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. And we have come to believe in Christ Jesus so that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by doing the works of the law, because no one will be justified by the works of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now our reading from Christian Maturity by E. Stanley Jones. The whipping, oh, this is Wednesday of week 32, depleting and defeating. The whipping up of the will to do your duty is depleting and defeating. And yet a great deal of preaching is the preaching of a moralism, a striving to whip up fagged will, wills. That's an old word that's kind of, <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of a, a better word for it. But anyway, as a radiant soul said, when I hear the word sermon, I know I'm going to get the dickens. Some sermons are usually given the people the dickens for not doing their duty. John the Baptist represented the gospel of a demand. You can't do this. You must do that. And Jesus said, who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than John the Baptist. Why? Because the kingdom of God did not present the gospel of a demand, but the gospel of an offer. We are to receive the kingdom, not whip up ourselves into it. Those who are in the kingdom, those who are in the kingdom of an offer, though they be the very least, are greater than those who are in the kingdom of a demand. For those who are under a demand end in depletion. Those who are under an offer end in repletion. 
They are replete with all it takes to live, for they are attached to infinite resources. They live by the grace and power of another. Then they move up to the next, page, next stage, the stage of faith. Faith is receptivity to the highest. In faith, you are not tense and struggling, but open and receptive. On this level, you do not whip up the will, you surrender the will. Then you are relaxed and receptive, and faith becomes recuperative. Round our emptiness flows his fullness and fills us. Round our incompleteness flows his perfection and perfects us. Round our restlessness flows his rest and rests us. Round our sin flows his holiness and invades us. Round ourselves flows his gracious self and displaces us. Round our lovelessness flows his love and loves us into loving. When we know how to take from those infinite resources, we know how to live by fullness, not our own. Hence, we live fully and overflowingly. Instead of religion being strain, hence drain, it is receptivity, hence release. Release from ourselves and release to others. My watch, my phone must be too far away, but I got the message. I heard the oven. Here's our prayer. Let me pray and do this real quick. Dear Father, we do ourselves and others are wrong when we struggle and strain to tie ourselves in knots. We close ourselves to your invading resources. Help me to live in the passive voice today, receiving, receiving, receiving. Amen. And our affirmation for the day. The art of living for me is reduced to simplicity. The art of receptivity to grace. Jesus is Lord.